everybody. Welcome to Exploring the Wine Glass, sponsored by Dracaena Wines. I'm your host, Lori, a UC Davis winemaking and WSET Level 2 graduate. And today on The Allure of the Poor, I am sitting down with Roger Bissell, sommelier that I met in person and am so impressed with when I met him. It was one of the best master classes that I had been to in a very long time. And what was even more impressive, it was the wines of Macedonia. I mean, who drinks wines of Macedonia? I do now, <laughs> thanks to Roger. So hi, Roger. Ciao, how are you? I am good. I am good. So um, first off, it's a lore of the poor, exploring the wine glass. So what is in your glass tonight? Uh, okay, so tonight uh, I actually have a Sicilian wine. Uh, in my glass. I'm drinking a white wine uh, from Mount Etna. It's an Etna Bianco. So it's uh, cento, It's 100% Carricante, an indigenous variety uh, to Sicily. And it's actually from the highest altitude vineyard in all of Europe. Oh, wow. Uh, it is uh, Ar uh, from Graci. That's the name of the producer. Okay. Etna Bianco Ar Arcuria. Korea. It's his crew bottling of his Carricante, and it's the highest altitude. So it's got a lot of really fresh notes, but real flintiness in it because it's black volcanic soil. So really crisp. Um, some might consider it a almost like Burgundian in style, uh, but it's got this beautiful crispness in it and flintiness you don't get from a lot of other white wines. That's why I like it. So. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. We uh, on Wine for Dutch Street, we had done at F for the letter E. So I am I love the black soils. I love that volcanic, and I know what you're talking about with that flintiness. It's like ah, it is awesome. Very food friendly. They're they're really really uh, great wines with food uh, because the acidity in them is there. The characters there, and then that that crispness that Italy is just so famous for, uh, with really well balanced tension and acidity. So, yes. Wonderful. Well, slancha. Uh, okay. Salute, slancha. Okay, we're Irish. <laughs> no Irish. <laughs> All right. So, as I mentioned, we had met at the in New York City uh, last year at the Macedonia master class yeah. and so I you know I, I guess now that I'm rethinking kind of what I said who drinks Macedonia I, it, that that didn't come out well because I thought the wines were wonderful and I really do just love them but they're not very popular in terms of going into a wine shop and finding a bottle from Macedonia so first off how did you hear about Macedonian wines, and how did it come about that you were teaching the master class for wines of Macedonia? Sure, good question. Uh, Lloyd. What happened is, is you know, as a sommelier, and moreover, just my personal zealous pursuit of any and all knowledge uh, and new. Uh, when I say new, I don't mean necessarily new in how many years they've been making wine, but just new maybe to the United States. I'm trying to constantly explore new regions, and I stumbled upon some Macedonian wines a few years ago that I thought, hmm, there's some great potential for character here, and uh, I was invited to go over there, uh, and I toured with all of their wineries. Uh, I spent some extensive several weeks actually in Macedonia, um, you know, understanding their terroir, their concepts uh, and their winemaking uh, ability, um, and then you know they'd asked if I'd be you know willing to deliver a master class and uh, be an ambassador for them. So yeah, that's that's how it came to pass, and because I'm really excited uh, about a lot of countries, but specifically Macedonia, tremendous value, but also an opportunity to to for great growth. So. They, I was very impressed with the wine there. They, they had that undertone we talked about. I've got my echo again. Um, are you hearing the echo or no? No, I'm not. No. Okay. Um, 
the they had that undertone of that dust like we were talking about um and there was and there just was enough coolness funkiness and that herbal kind of note that was in there that is enough to pique your interest and want you to go back for another glass right yeah sure really interesting right i mean so Macedonia, land of timeless sun, so there, there's plenty of fruit, obviously, there. Uh, but it has that, that dustiness from the Tawar, just like Napa Valley. Um, and it's one of the things where you, you keep revisiting. You taste the wine, and you come back, you're like, is that dust? What, it, and you just want to keep on tasting to understand what it is, you know? Great, great. And uh, they're getting better and better all the time. I had the opportunity to taste some new vintages since the last time uh, I saw, saw you over a year ago and uh, some of these newer vintages, uh, the newest release vintages are even better than mm -hmm. before. They're getting better at learning when to pick and uh, but uh, not just that but also the, the work in the vineyard, right? So which is where that's where it all starts, right? You're pruning, planting, all of that. Obviously none of it's possible without the tuar but that's where the real winemaking starts, is in the vineyard. They're getting better and better at that. So. And they are known for that course of the grape, right? Um, Vrane. So Vrane. There. <laughs> there we there. go, that one. Yeah. Yes. Black, 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 you know, Black workhorse, stallion. Right? Black stallion, black stallion. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's Yep. See, I kind of sort of remember. <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> oh, black stallion. That's much better than black horse. That's much better. Yeah. Um, well, I, it could be like it could be like you know in Italy the black rooster, right? Chianti Classico. That is so, true. Right. So black yeah. horse wouldn't be that far off. Right? right. You are right. You're right. Thanks for my save. Thanks for saving me. <laughs> um, on your website, RogerBissell.co, it says that you are certified on my A food and wine expert, investor, and hospitality consultant. That is really an awful lot. And I, they kind of all blend together, I think. So I think they kind, it kind of makes sense. But how do, you, how do you, you know, segregate what you're doing or box out all of the stuff you're doing? Sure. Well, what I've done, you know, in my, my career um, over the last – 25 years is, is to try to blend them together as much as I can. As a result of, you know, hospitality is hospitality. I have a huge passion for wine, obviously. Um, that's, that's, it's been a hobby and a passion. Um, and what I do is, is how I'm able to do this is I combine my passions into one, uh, one endeavor. So when I take people on trips, cultural enrichment tours of wine country and also Michelin restaurants or just authentic restaurants in Italy, Spain, France. Um, that's how I managed to combine them all. And then while I'm not traveling, uh, I actually uh, consult and I, um, you know, I'll, I'll work actually in a restaurant here in America, in Dallas. So. Do you actually like to do that? Do I what? Do you cook for yourself also? Uh, huge, huge uh, cook. I'm not going to call myself a chef, but, um, you know, in many, many, many households across America, they rave about my food. Um, I've learned so much over the years. I've taken culinary classes, uh, and, you know, I think uh, anyone that's a sommelier or, you know, my upbringing, um, having been raised on a farm, you understand quality components and you understand balance of flavors in food so you try to mimic that the best you can i'm not saying i i succeed every time but the best i can i try to create those items in my my own kitchen so so you enjoy it absolutely it's actually one of my most favorite things to do is to cook for others so that's my love language i guess 
You can come to California and cook for me whenever you want. <laughs> Although Deal. I'm, a, I'm a very finicky eater. It's like my my husband gets very upset because he'll pretty much eat anything, and I'm you know I'm like the the anti Atkins person. I live on carbohydrates, carbohydrates, carbohydrates. Um, well, then my pasta, my my handmade pasta that I make would uh, go over really really well. I make all my pasta from scratch, uh, and it's delicious. Oh my God! Okay, come on, <laughs> cook it up, cook it up. <laughs> um, where did you grow up? Uh, how did you get into wine? At what age? Like, tell us the story of Roger and wine. How did you grow up and fall in love with wine? Sure. Um, I'm originally from Italia, Italy, and <laughs> I uh, I came to this country when I was a little boy. And uh, my family had bought a farm, so I grew up on a farm in Rhode Island, specifically. And uh, I was blessed with uh, a mother that was a true romantic, or Henry David Thoreau, or Ralph Waldo Emerson. I never ate a piece of meat from the store until I was probably 18 years old. So everything that we ate came from our farm. Um, I was really blessed, and my mom was an excellent, excellent cook, um, and everything was all natural. We had blueberries and raspberries and cornfields and, and every vegetable imaginable, and goats and chickens and cows and peacocks and horses. and Yeah, so we ate um, everything. We were pretty much self-sustainable. So. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How do you come from Italy to Rhode Island? <laughs> it just happens, right? The, the, you, you know, you know, when you're that young, your family moves, then it's it is what it is. You know, did, it's uh, yeah. Did your did you have other relatives here that they were coming to? Yes, or was yes, yes. Other, you're right. Other relatives were living here as well. And um, my father was from the United States, so. Oh, okay, okay. All right, a little, um, little more, a little more. Right. But, but, you know, it sounds great to be on a farm, but I'll tell you, getting up at 4.30 every single morning, okay, I grew up on a farm, a uh, 350-year-old farmhouse in New England where we only had wood stove heat, okay? So we chopped 15 cords of wood a year, and we tapped all of the trees for maple syrup because we made our own maple syrup as well. So pretty cool, but a lot of work, right? All of us kids, we worked a lot. Well, and then and then school, and then other activities. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so tell me about you know everybody talks about this was my aha wine. So I know what my aha wine was. Um, it is near and dear to me in my heart. Um, my palate has changed, so it's not something I drink anymore, which I think is kind of a common, a common thread. But uh, do do you have a wine that was your like, oh, this is wine. This is this is some good stuff. Um, you know, I, I I do get this question asked a lot, as we all do in the industry, and for me. I, I never had that one wine that was like, aha. I've had amazing wines over the years that I was like, wow, this is what wine can be and become. Um, but it wasn't ever any one wine because, truthfully, I was drinking a little bit of wine every night since I was about eight, eight or nine years old. But if, I had, if you twisted my arm and said, Roger, what is the wine that – maybe change your life or what you think. And for me, it's a particular grape. Okay. okay. And I've had many examples of this. And for me, it's Nebbiolo, but specifically in Barolo, um, which is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I've had – Nebbiolo gives you something that only, in my opinion, there's only basically four or five varieties in the world that can give that to you. For me, it's Pinot Noir, okay, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, Syrah, specifically like a Cote Roti or a Hermitage, and then a little-known variety called Schiopatino. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. 
Schiopatino is a variety from north uh, eastern Italia from the region of Friuli. And when I say it gives you something, I mean as it ages. When you taste the wine at its peak, what it was, it was basically the realization of a dream of a winemaker, you know, from years ago. It, it gives you so much more, like secondary, tertiary, third, fourth, fifth, sixth levels of taste that are unimaginable and just are life-changing. So for me, it would be a Barolo, and maybe that partic a particular one that was life-changing for me would be Rivetto 1982 uh, Barolo. That one... The, that yeah, yeah. That I, I've had a few magic bottles, and over the years, and that particular vintage as well, sometimes great, but a magic bottle that, you know, Nebbiolo gives you these dried uh, roses and and violets and truffle and and, and tar sometimes, and just and it's so fresh, uh, a 30, 40 year old wine that just comes alive in the glass. So yeah. So going back to that bottle, did you purchase it? Were you someplace that you tasted it? Uh, okay, good question. Um, the first time I had uh, 1982 Barolo, uh, it was purchased, but uh, and it was delicious. It was great, but one of those I was actually gifted. I was at Rivetto in Sedalunga di Alba, and I. Uh, you know, he gifted uh, it to me, and I we had it at a dinner at a Michelin restaurant with a dear friend of mine, and it was just magic. It was magic over there. It tastes it tastes completely different when you're drinking it in the uh, Lange in the hills of Barolo. I, for whatever reason, it just doesn't taste quite the same when you travel across the pond. <laughs> Um, I mean, but that's that's one of the things that I love about wine is it and and I should like uh, register this or trademark it or whatever because I say it all the time. I'm like wine transcends you. Although I'm probably not the first person who has said that. <laughs> um, no, that's that's really good, Lori. That's really good. I like it. I'm gonna start to use it. <laughs> Just give me credit. Okay. <laughs> Just like, yeah, right. <laughs> but it it totally transcends you and. Uh, it's it's it amazes me how you can take a sip and of of a of a bottle of wine and it can tr take you to a whole different realm a whole different place and you can be you know enveloped in what that region has to offer whether you've been there or not you know it, right. it, it just it can take it but if you're there it just it when you take a sip of a wine that is does that to you, it's right. going to your soul. It takes you in, and you know you're being wrapped around by the comfort of what that region has to offer. And it's it's true. It transcends you, man. It's awesome. It, you know, I'm glad you brought it up because it's magic. I talk to people all the time, and I, I tell them that you know wine. You are the realization of dreams. You are transported to another world, uh, the terroir. The you can feel the soil, the earth, the dirt, the, the 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 history, the blood, sweat, and tears that went in something. And it's so magical because hospitality, food, wine, it's the greatest connection between different cultures. It's it's the most intimate connection you can have with someone. And it's so magical to think that it's in something like this bottle, which might be distributed in 80 countries around the world, but somehow it makes it from that vineyard to the, uh, import, the ship on the importation company, and then the distributor, and then the distributor sells it, and it goes to a restaurant or a supermarket or a retail store, and you buy it. And then when you buy it, it makes its way into someone's home. Okay? And it forms an intimate bond with that person in their home, and they open it up. Maybe they wait a year. Maybe they don't wait at all. Maybe they wait 20 years. And then you see the way it evolves because it's a living, breathing thing. And like you said, it transcends you. I, wow, talk about romantic. It's, it's like a, a transcendental, uh, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah. 
Well, I'm a big fan. Of it. <laughs> so, but and the other thing is, is at the same time, one of the things I say with exploring the wine glass is I will never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. So for that same bottle of wine that can take you and and show you what it's got and, and you know, like I say, transcend you to that terroir and feel all of that in your heart and soul, somebody else can pick up that same glass, that same bottle, pour it, and go, this is a good wine, <laughs> and be completely happy with that. And that's, you know, you, you don't have to be so elaborate, but wine can do that for you if if you want it to. Yeah, I'm glad you brought brought that up. Uh, I, I want to talk about that later too, because that's a really good point you make. Right. So let's go to your your certification. You are a certified sommelier. Um, did you you um, did you go through the court of masters? Yes. Yeah, so I, I have been through the court, but that's not where uh, my main certification is from, oh. like where I've really been credentialed. I'm with the Worldwide Sommelier Association, okay. uh, which is part of NASA, North American Sommelier, and also I'm with AIS, the Association of Italian Sommeliers. Okay, so we're going to get back to the AIS because that's a whole, woo, that's a whole cool thing. Um, but so tell us a little bit about the certification. When when you go through the classes, what are they what are you learning? Let's not say what they want you to do. What are you learning? What do you have to go through? And, you know, I, I'm assuming it's probably similar to the master where different you can go at your own pace, basically. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit different from the court. And, I, you know, the court's a, a great um, uh, organization in America, and I, I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but it's more structured and scholastic maybe okay. in its approach. Um, where you're literally going to like going to school for several years for AIS and everything, you know. Um, but there's workshops, just like court, you know. There's materials you need to read, you know. There's, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, if, if I showed you my library, um, you know, I, I probably have maybe 300 books in my library. That's it, and 200 of them are going to be on wine. Uh, so it's a lot of studying and reading on your own. But moreover than that, I would say the biggest way to learn for me over the years has been <laughs> drinking, yes, but going there, actually traveling there, and then also working in the restaurant industry. Uh, when you work in the industry, you're exposed to a lot more than maybe somebody that has a passion for wine and, uh, you know, and they're still working and then they're studying on the side. You know, working in the ind food and beverage industry, uh, you know, in any particular month, I might taste 1,500 different wines, okay? So, and... As an individual, let's say the average consumer in America that has uh, a propensity or a, a passion for wine, you know, they go and they pick up and they might try a bottle every night with their spouse, their partner, whatever. Okay, that's 30 bottles in a month or 30 wines they might try. 1,500, you know, you can dial in really quickly, you know, what particular varieties it's supposed to taste like from a particular region. So. Yeah, it's uh, a little more intense. Uh, and were you working in the industry while taking the classes? Do they go hand in hand? Um, you know, initially, no. I, wor I, uh, I worked in finance uh, 15 years ago and uh, owned a wine bar and restaurant in Chicago and used that as a, uh, uh, a basis for launching my knowledge because it was always a passion of mine since I was a little child. Uh, even prior to that, I was, you know, a much like most of the people in America, I had a, a passion for wine. I always I had a big seller I would purchase. And once you really started getting into the working in the industry, that's when I really began to learn and understand and know why. And these classes, uh, I'm assuming there were tests at different levels? Oh, of course, yes. Many, many tests, lots of workshops. Uh, lots of master classes on wine. 
Uh, you know, over the years, like we discussed, uh, you know, learning a lot from others before me that, uh, you know, were masters in a particular variety or, or region. So, yeah, it helps. To, you know, the other thing is, is uh, you know, tasting groups. A lot of people don't talk about, but sometimes uh, having a tasting group of other people working towards a common goal can, can be advantageous uh, for a distribution of information in a very expeditious uh, manner. But sometimes it can also uh, swing, you know, your sense of palate too. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. I think it's great for this type of knowledge, tasting groups. I don't think it's as good for um, your blind tasting ability and your assessment of, of quality a lot of times. I say that all the time that um, I am not a fan of having tasting notes on a bottle. I am okay. not a fan of having, a, you know, a text sheet with me when I'm tasting because okay. my brain, if I'm, if I'm tasting, then I want to taste what I'm going to taste. And I say to everybody, you know, they ask me, well, how do you, how do you taste the blueberry or how do you taste this or that? And I'm like, well, just because I taste blueberry doesn't mean you're tasting blueberry. So that's rule number one. Um, right. But my brain, and I think a lot of people, if I look at the back of the label and it says, you know, raspberry, whatever, blah, 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 my right. brain automatically goes to that and I have a lot of difficulty not getting that characteristic in there um, if I've been told it's in there and I think that's where the tasting groups can be can be a little disheartening you know when yeah. it comes to that they would I mean I just I mean I'm just mm -hmm. W set two but we had you know you did tastings uh, but you know people are like oh well I'm getting this and I'm like I don't get that. And then after, oh, right. okay, I can kind of see, you know. So, right. um, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly and 100%. Um, and I love, by the way, I love WSET. I am as well level two, and I love WSET. I think it's really about the study of wine. Wine. You know? And there's no uh, – uh, Advertising or propaganda and, and maybe dollars and cents of big name uh, playing into it at all. Right. Um, and I, I think it's important. I agree with you. When I when I go in and I um, set wine, when I decide to set a wine list, maybe, and I, I'm designing a wine list. First, uh, forgetting about the food and everything else aside, because I tailor a wine list to the food, you know, the menu. Um, Whenever I taste wines, blind, I always taste blindly. I never want to see the prices of the wine when I taste, and I never want to see text sheets. Any uh, uh, sales, uh, accounting, sales reps that come in, distributors, if they come in and give it to me, I turn it upside down. I don't want to look at it. I want to assess the quality of the wine for what it is and how I perceive it um, first. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, I. It's amazing how your brain can be swayed by reading something. Absolutely, you know, yeah. it, I could and not naming names, but I could tell you this is a three hundred dollar bottle of wine, and the the manner in which you go about tasting it in your brain is going to change completely different. And then I could tell you, up oh, actually, it's twelve bucks. Right. right. And yeah, and you'd say, oh my gosh, it's a. But, and everyone's palate is different, too. And, and, you know, it's a chemical reaction. It could have been what you were eating prior to. It could have been you brushed your teeth. You did this. You did that. You, some people might smoke. I, you know, some people might have had something a little extra salty right. in their lunch, and then they tasted it. So we, there's so many factors that go into wine. Um, I'll, I'll use a quick example. When people go out to eat and, and – and, uh, it happens a lot of times. They might have a bottle of wine and they go out to eat at a restaurant and they say, wow, that is an amazing bottle of wine. So then they, they, they have an amazing experience that night. They go home, they go to the wine store, they find that bottle of wine, they purchase it, and then they have it again at home and they say, wow, 
this wine just doesn't taste the same. It, it's not as good, quote unquote, good to me this evening. Um, and it's not because the wine was any different. 90% of the time it was because of the food that they were eating with the wine that night just happened to be a perfect combination. And on the converse side, there's people that have a wine that they really, really love. They go out to eat, they order that wine, and then they have it maybe with the wrong food, and they think, gosh, this wine just doesn't taste just as good tonight. Right. And it's, it's the pairing. Pairing's so important. And I think also the environment has a lot to do with it. Um, yeah. Mike and I, um, we, we went to a wine region not to be named, um, and we, this was young in our wine lives, but, um, and we were tasting these wines, and we're like, oh, these are kind, these are really good, these are really good, and we bought, and we bought, and we bought, and we came home with maybe about a case of wine, and it was like three days we were in this region, right? Right. And uh, so we have this case of wine. And then all of a sudden, we're like, okay, well, let's start drinking this wine. And we open the first bottle. We're like, what the hell? This, this is not a wine we drink. Not, it wasn't faulty in any way. It just wasn't right. our palate, you know. Right. Like, okay. You know, and then the next one. And we're like, we ended up giving the rest of the wine to his mother um, <laughs> because it just was not, we just gave up. And I think when you're, especially when you're younger in your wine world, right. you know, you can be swayed by the, you know, oh, these people are so nice. Oh my God, I'm tasting, I'm tasting at their house, and, you know, or I'm tasting right. in the farm and I'm petting this beautiful dog and a horse is running past me, you know, you get sure. in the emotion and your palate changes, you know, and then when sure. that stimulus isn't around you anymore, your yeah. palate is different, you know. That, that can, that can happen. And then also, you know, like you had said earlier, you can go on a journey. Your palate evolves and changes in time as you learn more and more. Um, you know, it it changes. Everyone's different. You know, right. I mean, people's eating styles are different too. So. Right. It's like when you do something that's adventurous for the first time. <laughs> like, you know, it's so scary. And then as you move on, you're like, oh, well, that's a piece of cake. You know, your adventure change because of your experience and wine is kind of the same thing and like you said it's a living thing so it's going to evolve and you're evolving so that's a lot of dynamics going on as the years sure. go by yeah yeah um okay so going to the uh ais that you had mentioned so there is a photo of you uh pre being presented with a very large metal, um, and in the, yes, 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 in what I have to say is the coolest looking room ever. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's like the men of letters room, you know, like you need the secret <laughs> knock or the special password to get in there. And so uh, tell me about that metal and okay. that experience and, oh my God. <laughs> sure. So. <clears throat> That was that picture you're referencing, and people can uh, probably look at it on my social channels and my website. I was knighted that day, so that was uh, me being knighted. So, oh. yeah, so I was knighted in Italy, and so it was for my contributions to food and wine uh, to the region of Italia, uh, specifically uh, to the region of Piemonte, Italia, but it. Uh, it was as a result of my lifelong dedication to Italian wine. Even though I'm an ambassador for Macedonia, uh, I'm very passionate about Italian wines. And I, um, uh, you know, I'm constantly uh, educating and training and, and, and giving people knowledge and exposing them to the food and wine of, of Italy. It's very near and dear to my heart, truthfully. I can't hide it. Italy is one of my favorite places in the world. It is my favorite place. <laughs> I was say so when I was coming up with the questions, that that's funny because I I thought it was about being uh, the, a master sommelier in that area. No, 
but you're being nice. Yeah. When I was coming up with the question, I actually initially wrote, it looks like you're being knighted. And I was like, all right, no, that, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> that can't happen. No, but that's exactly what it is. Complete with fanfare, um, red carpet, I mean, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Is there a sword? Tell me there's a sword. Is there uh, a sword? It's actually not a sword. It's this giant wooden, like, scepter. Ah, so cool. That is so cool. I, that, I, I need to bow down because that it might be the coolest thing ever on the face of the earth. Just, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just blessed, that's all. And, that's, and know the right people, maybe. <laughs> but you know what? That doesn't just happen. That's because you've done something. You, you've followed your passion. You've pursued your passion. And it's wonderful to be recognized for it. But, like, that wouldn't have happened if you were just, Oh yeah, this is good wine. You know, like or oh, this right. is no, 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 no. Or this is, you know, you had to have done something that showed to them. Yeah, you have to be nominated, and it's a, you know selection process. And um, truthfully, it, it, it says that it's really as a result of my uh, lifelong dedication to the, the the culture, the cuisine, the the, the food and wine of, of Italy. I've taken people, so many people, on trips. Uh, to Italy, to different tastings at wineries, and I'm constantly giving classes on Italian, different Italian wines. So, yeah. That's an that's, amazing that's thing. Why. Like, how, how did you feel when you first, when you found out you were nominated? Like, were you like, holy shit, oh my God, like. You know, it was, it was an, it was a, it was an honor. And uh, I, I was yeah, really, like really. Telegram, like, how did you find out you were nominated? <laughs> well, I got a phone call first okay. um, from Italy, and then I received a form, you know, formal invitation and, you know, proclamation and all this and uh, scroll. But I was really, really honored, and and actually, I was happy to, to be recognized uh, for my passion because. One of the most amazing things in life is when people can feel your passion. You know, life is so short, okay, that it's so important to help others or to live life for passion. Don't work, uh, you know, if if you work for passion, money will always come, okay? Uh, So many people pursue money and work for your passion, something that you are passionate about and you know, financial will always work out in the end, always. And there's no better thing. And you, no one can fake that, the authenticity of it. So. Uh, so did you just pull that metal out for tonight? Like, do you have it in a frame? Is it like no. it? A- it's not even in a frame. It's, uh, it's can I be honest? It's, it sits in this. Oh, it comes box. in a box. Oh. That's it. I would have it like with spotlights and you know uh, clothes on it and in a in a in like a, what do they call it? a shadow box and you know no I'm not I'm not uh, I'm I'm not showy uh, you know at, at its very core wine doesn't matter if it's ten dollars or if it's a hundred dollars I think I actually said this in our master class mm-hmm. that wine is a it's a social lubricant as well. And it's meant to be shared, to open up and to share with friends and family and to to break bread. And and wine's an amazing thing. You know, you could be sitting across from someone that doesn't even speak your language and you can share wine and food together and you have a connection. So I'm going to share a little bit. So I went to Villanay to talk about Cab Franc. Okay. Okay. I had an incredible experience. I was there for a week. Uh, I was talking to the leading winemakers in Villanay and tasting all of these amazing Cab Francs. And, you know, they were throwing in Tokai there every so often, so all was good. Um, but I was sitting next to, <laughs> I was sitting next to uh, at a dinner to a winemaker, and we were drinking his wine. Now, I don't know any Hungarian. What there's I can't even say hello in it. Um but I tasted the wine and it was so such a wonderful wine and it was so nice that I took out my phone and thank goodness for Google Translate. I went <laughs> you know, I typed in 
English and translated it to Hungarian and handed him the phone. And he read the translation and his wife was sitting next to me and watching his face as he read what I said, I gave him, ta you know, I gave him brief tasting notes, but what it, you know, right. how, what I thought of the wine and watching his face while he read it. And I'm not like, he went from like sitting like this to like, you know, like, <laughs> like this. And he take he takes the phone and he does this to his wife, <laughs> hits his wife in the shoulders and hands her my phone so she can read it. And the smile that went on their face, like, it is. it is. It's an amazing thing. And you're, it, it brings people together. It, it's a, no matter what your language is, wine is a common denominator there. It's a, it's a common thread. I couldn't yeah. agree more. That's a great story. Yeah, I know. I, I, really I, oh, my God. To what, I still can close my eyes and see his face of what, you know, as he was reading how I appreciated his wine, you know, it, it was, it was amazing, but it's true. It's a common wow. denominator. It's a common, common denominator. But, um, all right. So back to you in 2013, you were living prior, you were living in Chicago, which, um, I'm very familiar with Chicago. I'm there frequently, uh, okay. and you moved to Florida. So right now, Let's hope everybody is going to remain safe there in Florida. Uh, but that's a huge change. <laughs> that is a huge change of, of culture, of everything. Uh, so what triggered that move? And are you a lake person or an ocean person? <laughs> Ooh, um, I love the ocean. <laughs> I love the ocean. You know, water makes you whole. I, I think... Um, you know, I love to fish. That's, that's not many people in the in the in the country know that about me. That I'm an avid fisherman. I actually would do lots of uh, tournaments used, uh, for, <laughs> for fishing uh, in the ocean. So, um, what prompted the move is, you know, I wanted to be in a little bit more relaxed uh, environment. I'd been living in Chicago for a long time. And I wanted a little bit a slower quality of life, and I, I wanted to be in the warmth. Uh, I, I was going through some some personal health issues, and I, I just wanted to be close warm. to warm warm weather. And uh, that that's what I did, and um, I just followed my passion, and uh, just went for it. Southern Florida, Southwest Florida, and uh, yeah. That's how it happened. And because most people from Chicago, when they retire, because I was surrounded by lots of retirees who have become so many great clients of mine as well, um, they all moved to Naples, you know. <laughs> I, I have never really been to Naples, but I know so many people who live in Naples. I'm like, it's got to be huge. Like, it's like there's got to be. You know, it's so funny. Naples, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think Naples has – like 30,000 people. <laughs> it's like everybody goes to Naples, everybody. Everyone. And, you know, it's funny. It's such a huge wine community, too. Oh. Naples, Naples Florida. Um, they have a huge wine festival, I know, because they've contacted us. Number one, number one the, yeah, number one in the world. Oh. They actually raise more money at the Naples Wine Festival every year. Um, anyway, I think last year they raised 18 to $19 million. Wow. And this year, for 20, or the next festival, you know, January, February 2020, they're going to shoot to raise $20 million. Uh, and, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a giant charity. Um, one of the reasons why is because there's 159 private clubs uh, and resorts in uh, the Fort Myers, Naples area. So that's like in 35 square minutes, you know, 35 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so there's a lot of... There's a lot of wealth uh, there, and so there's a huge conglomeration. And to put it in perspective, you know, so a population of that size, I think Naples to Fort Myers, that 35-minute radius, has over has close to 30 sommeliers oh. living there. So uh, that that's a lot. That's oh. like that's that that means that there's a lot of wine. 
there. Yeah. Yeah. There. I mean, if you put that in perspective, um, you know, with the court, I think there's like four or five advanced level sommeliers and several that are going for their master right now. Oh, wow. Um, and in a population that size, I mean, that's like basically how many are in Dallas, you know, a much, much bigger city. So. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Quality of living is, 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 is really great in that area of the country. Uh, it's, life is very peaceful, very clean. Uh, crime is like non-existent. I mean, when I was living there, no word of a lie, I could leave the keys to my car legitimately in the cup holder, in my car. And, <laughs> and I did this all the time. I don't think I ever locked my car. Well, that's nice. That's yep. nice. Now, while you were there, uh, you were working at the West Bay Beach Club as the food and wine manager, but you, and you were you developed an award-winning wine list. So, congratulations! Yeah, uh, it was West Bay, Be West Bay Beach and Golf Club, and I was the director of food and beverage there. Um, and yeah, uh, developed award-winning wine list. The Club Managers Association of America recognized us for that. Um, yeah, and I mean, years prior, I had developed Wine Spectator award-winning wine list as well, but not there because because it's a private club. Uh, oh, right. You can't submit it for it, right. an award. Uh, although in Chicago, I had done that already. So the um, that's uh, our wine is in Dracina Wines is in a, uh, a grand award-winning wine spectator uh, restaurant, and that's how I learned that if it's private, you can't. They, it has to be a public place. So the the resort is a private resort, but because the golf course can take in public, they those people who uh, go to the wow. golf course can then also go to this restaurant. So uh, it's right. public. Which is a shame because there's some private clubs in our country that have wine lists that would rival um, you know, some of the best wine lists in the country uh, because of the amount of wealth. I mean, for example, at, at West Bay Beach and uh, Golf Club, I had over, uh, at one point in time, close to a half a million dollars oh. in, in, in wine inventory at wholesale. Yeah. So, and that's a private club. So, okay. That's yeah. um the, but I think if you look at it from the wine spectator part, Correct. I get why, you know, they don't want to say, ooh, this place is fantastic. Nah, 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 you can't go there, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. And then with wine spectator, too, you, you actually, a lot of people don't realize, you actually have to pay for the application for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I believe I believe so. Um, but, like, where, where we are, the, this, um, the resort, Crystal Springs Resort, uh, it's Restaurant Latour. They they have okay. like like, four, like the Tour. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's like forty five thousand bottles in their caves, you know. Wow. Um, wow. And, uh, it's impre You know, I'm we're honored to be in there. But the thing, you know, I had interviewed her for for uh, the podcast, and you know, the people who go there, they're not ordering, you know, they're ordering local wines. They're ordering California wines. Right. So, it's you know it's it's very different, but when you walk through the caves that she has and you see the wines that they have, you know, I I was drooling, you know, I was like, oh my god, you know, right. they have a complete they have a complete room in the cave dedicated to Latour, of it, you know. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the places I'm gonna have to give a shout out to one of one of the places in the country that I I drool over in their wine. Uh, it's in Tampa, Florida. Uh, a lot of people will know it. It's called Burns Steakhouse. Okay. Um, I know it, but... It has the largest wine list in the world. Wow. Uh, it's in Tampa. They have over 32,000 different labels. Wow. Um, yeah. it's, it's incredible. They have verticals of uh, Laf uh, Lafitte back to the 1800s. Oh my God! It's, it's ridiculous. And they have their own warehouse. This, this restaurant has been there. It's a steakhouse for like a hundred years, and they have 
a warehouse across the street just for their wine in addition to the giant cellar they have at the restaurant. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, but when when I was there, they uh, she was explaining what they have to go through in order to get the grand award, and mm -hmm. it's like it's crazy. It's crazy. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just you know, your inventories. Your and then I mean, they come in and they pick one bottle. Yeah. That you gotta like go ship proof. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> It's yeah. crazy. It is crazy. So congratulations on uh, the war award. Uh, and you had mentioned earlier that you do the you choose the wine to pair the food, not the not the other way around. Right. On my, when I design a wine list. Yes. Um, yeah. When I design a wine list, uh, I let the chef create his menu. Um, and then I sit and choose wines that pair with the food. Now, if I'm designing a wine dinner, I do it the other way around because I like to select the wines I want to highlight, and then, I, and then with a chef, I'll sit down and design a perfect menu to enhance the flavor of the wine. Yeah. Now, again, you move in 2018. You yeah. moved to Dallas, um, so you don't you don't like staying in one place. You know, you're what, what's your complete I like, what's your I like challenges. I'm a Gemini. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I'm a Sagittarius. I'm the same way. I'm like I'm like all right. I did this. I gotta move on. I did this. I gotta move right. on. All right. Right. Um, so uh, you moved to Dallas, and that is where you currently are. Correct. I'm currently residing in Dallas, Texas. Yep. Okay, and you are now currently working for Chef Giuliano Matresi? Matresi? No, 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 not currently. Uh, I am completely done with my collaboration project with Chef Giuliano Matresi. Okay. Yep. So tell um, us about that collaboration. Yeah, so, uh, you know, when I came to Dallas, I came here, you know, for new opportunities um, and an exciting possibility to collaborate with different people, right? Um, and Chef Giuliano Matarese represented an exciting collaboration for me as well. Uh, you know, he had Michelin experience. So um, I came to Dallas, though, for one major reason, is that Dallas is the most explosive city in the country currently. It's the fastest growing. Uh, and there's a huge opportunity here to shape the, the, the food and beverage uh, future. Because of how fast, what a fast-growing and volatile market it is, and I, I saw, uh, I saw a, def a definitive need to help educate uh, and to help share my passion with a very fast-growing population. So, and, and, and there's a lot of wealth here as well, which helps in the the wine industry, you know, because they tend to go hand in hand. But. So in this collaboration, did you help him develop his wine list for his restaurant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I developed uh, a really uh, great, authentic Italian, uh, the best Italian wine list in Dallas. Um, and it's 100, that uh, restaurant uh, has a 100% uh, Italian-only wine list oh. with, over, with over 220 different varieties. 220 wow. different varieties of wine. Of all Italian. Well, yeah, so everybody it, I know who studies Italy is like, they love it, but they hate it because there's so many different varieties and so many wow. different re little itty bitty regions. <laughs> you know, Italy has over 500 varieties of wine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, that's a lot. And that's then, a lot. And they're, the regions, the AVA, well, not their AVAs, uh, you know, but their their districts are all right. There's loads yeah. of them. <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah. Um, so I just I just want to share because I deliver so many classes on wine, um, you know, around the country. And a very famous artist in Italy, a good friend, uh, Purple Rita, her name is, or Rita Barbero. She has drawn. Uh, wine maps for me 
like this is a map of Italy, as you can see. And if you notice, there's different colors. Yes. This is the 20 regions of Italy, and each one is drawn with a native variety from that region. So it's drawn with wine. Oh, my God, that is so cool. That is so cool. And I have, you know, I have over, like, 20 different maps from her work. And I use these in my mass, you know, my classes. So I'll deliver a master class, let's say, on Piemonte. So here's the region of Piemonte. Right. And then specifically Barolo. These are the 11 communes in Barolo. Oh, my God. And, that is and, uh, beyond so cool. cool. Beyond cool. It's drawn with wine. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. Oh, my God. That's awesome. See, so now everybody who's listening to the podcast, you now specifically need to go to YouTube and you need to <laughs> fast forward to at least to that this point. So you can see those pictures because that is absolutely incredible. Those, yeah, they are amazing. Everyone that sees those maps, I've shown, and I've shown them to thousands of people, and everyone that sees them says, "Can I buy those? Can I get? Can I buy those from you?" They all want to buy them from me and yeah. uh, frame them, but I just use them for education. But uh, really, really cool because and it evolves with time because it's wine. wine. <laughs> so the shades of the map changes like Barbera and Barolo and it's all native yeah it makes it easy to learn too so. that's pretty cool that's awesome that is awesome so now that you're done with your collaboration it kind of opens up your time to Correct. do other things and your latest venture now is you are hosting events um, Dolce Vino Event. Yeah, and, so I've been, and I've been doing that for the last several months, but uh, yeah, I host events called Dolce Vino. Remember how we said that wine shouldn't be pretentious, okay? Wine is approachable. So once per month at different venues throughout Dallas, um, I host a wine class slash networking event. And at the networking event, I invite one interesting person, uh, maybe a famous person from Dallas, and we do an interview as well. But it's where people that are novices, and then I have even sommeliers that come to the class too. In a very unpretentious setting, we get the chance to try four different wines and understand the relationship between it and get the opportunity to network with people from different walks of life, removing all these pretentious barriers and making it about wine. And the reason why it's called Dolce Vino is because in Italia, we say the Dolce Vita. How I understand to all my Italian friends out there that are listening, it's grammatically incorrect to say <laughs> Dolce Vino. It would be El Vino Dolce. Okay? But from a marketing perspective, it sounds like it. <laughs> Dolce Vita. So this is the Dolce Vino. So people have an opportunity to come to these classes and uh, yeah, it's, it's just an exciting, um, it's more, it, it, it's more about the excitement of sharing with others. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's once a month and, yeah. um, they can sign up and, uh, I noticed your recent one, you just announced where it was. Uh, so it's always at a different location. You said always at a different location because I try what it, what it is is, Oh, and number two, you know, they, they get the materials, and then they have the opportunity to buy any of the wines if they like at really, you know, a little bit above wholesale, like retail prices, because I tend to choose wines that aren't as mainstream, but great, great gems. Um, well, who wants to go to a dinner if they can, like, go to, you know, Total Wine or whatever and pick up the same bottle, right? They're going right. to you so they can experience something that's not at best Correct. Correct. And, and, you know, I might have, uh, you know, a Napa Valley cab, uh, but it's not going to be a super mainstream. It's going to be something maybe off the beaten path that's like, wow, this is really great. This is, you know, so I try to shine a little bit of light on local entrepreneurs and business people, number one. And then number two, shine light on some wineries that don't get the opportunity. So... 
That's wonderful. Enjoy and your sweet life because it's called the Dolce Vino. In Italy, we call it the Dolce Vita because it's about slowing down life and enjoying what you have and who you're with. Same thing with my class. So. And when they go, each time it's a different theme, like either a different varietal or a different region or something like that? Yeah. Well, I always pick two white, two white wines and two red wines. Because I, you know, I want to appeal to, you know, uh, same amount of people as well. Like some people aren't partial to red wine, some people aren't partial to white. So I go half and half. So, or maybe one white, one rosé, two red. So. But each time, it's an educational experience yep. and a community coming together to talk Correct. about whatever it is. Really, really fun events. Everyone that has gone has really enjoyed and. And it's an opportunity to connect with others and, and at an educational level. So. Fantastic, fantastic. So now tell, tell the listeners uh, or viewers, where can they find you on, social, on the socials? Sure. Um, so uh, I have um, my own uh, Instagram uh, channel. It's Roger, R-O-G-E-R, underscore Bissell, be like boy, I-S-S-E-L-L. And then, uh, you know, on Facebook, you can find me at Meet Roger Bissell. Uh, and I have a website called rogerbissell.co.co. And all my news, uh, exciting events will be happening there. And any of my press and media, all of that. And um, so I'm going to be a little, you know, like me, me, me here. Are you coming back to New York soon? <laughs> yeah, so in 2020, uh, I'll be delivering uh, four master classes on wine, okay. um, and I'll be in New York twice. So uh, I'm working out the details of what exact month that's going to be, but yes, I'll be back in New York, um, you know, very soon, very okay. soon. And I'll be in Chicago as well, because like this last time I was in New Jersey, New York, Chicago, LA, so Yeah. Can you can you share what the class will be, or is it too early? Uh, I can. Uh, I'll be doing ma a Macedonian class uh, again, but I'll be okay. doing some uh, Italian master classes as well. Oh, okay. Uh, right. yeah. You know who to hit up to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting. I need to. Um, I, I want to do Cab Franc. I'm still waiting. You know, for some. Cab Franc. I'm a huge fan of Cab Franc. You piqued my interest earlier. Oh, well, you know what? You tell me when you're in New York, and I will bring you a bottle without a doubt. Without a doubt. We'll do a little private tasting after the class. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds like a deal. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, we, we have two Cab Francs. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, we, will, we, will, we can work that out. You know, I haven't had the pleasure of, uh, of, of trying those wines yet. So I really, really would um, look forward to trying that. Oh, thank you. Well, I would love to hear what you think about them. I mean, uh, it's, you know, you talk about passion. That's why we chose Cap Franc. That's what we love, you know. Uh, but, uh, where did that come from? Where did Cap, why, why Cap Franc? Yeah, where did your passion come from with that? So we were uh, very early on, Mike and I were uh, out in California, and we walked into um, William Harrison Winery okay. on the Silverado Trail. And uh, the woman behind the counter, you know, she's pouring for us, and the woman behind the counter is like, oh, well, we just had some wine uh, club members come in, and we have this bottle. Do you want to try it? Now, who says no to that, you know, like, you know. <laughs> no one would say no. Yeah. So we said, sure. So she poured it without even telling us what it was, like, you know. And we both tasted it, and we're like, oh, my God, this is, like, great. What is this? And then she told us it was Cab Franc. So we purchased Cab Franc, and then we were on a mission to find other wineries that made Cab Franc. So when we decided to start Dracina Wines, we were like, all right, we're going to, you know, we're going to focus in on what we love. And we decided, you know, 
this is what we want to make is Cab Franc. And in all honesty, there's two things, right? If, if it didn't go well, we were going to be drinking a lot of wine. Right? So, so, so we, we picked a, wine, a varietal that we would like. Luckily, we don't, we don't get to drink very much of ours. We've sold out every vintage uh, since we started. Uh, but that's, that's where it came from. And then um, I'm, you know, I'm a Jersey girl. I'm a little snarky at times. And there's okay. every wine holiday on the face of the earth, but there wasn't Cab Franc Day. So I was like, I'm starting Cab Franc Day. So 2015, when we were, we had just released our first vintage, 2013, I went to social media and I started hashtag Cab Franc Day. And it trended third on Twitter. <laughs> and, and, wow. Yeah, and every year now on December 4th, because that's the anniversary of uh, Cardinal Richelieu's uh, death, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's Cab Franc Day. And every year I host Cab Franc Day on Twitter, and every year it's trended, and we get more and more wineries that participate in it, and and it's it's taken wow. on. It's now. It's now international. I mean, it's. I have. I have people in like five Chile? different countries. No, you know they're not. I can't. I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody there. Um, I need to make a connection. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I know. Oh, yeah. I know a gentleman um, in Bordeaux, and he makes Cap Franc, and he's been trying to. But nobody in Bordeaux, you know, he's like, oh, they're not doing anything. But, yes, no, you need to make me a connection. Okay. okay. We need to talk. I need to be able to get Chinon. I mean, Cab Franc, Chinon, you know, producers in Chinon need to get involved. I mean, that's the birthplace, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it is internationally recognized now. So I would love to have them involved. I would love to have them Another involved. Another example of uh, passion reigning supreme there, though, right, for you. Yes, yes, yes. And it is, we, I mean, I am, that's what I, you know, I am a cab franc, you know, champion. <laughs> well, your passion is palpable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so... Are you ready for my little game of opposites? Okay, I'm a little, I, I have a little bit of intrepidation, but I'm ready for your game. Okay, tell me, right. tell me the rules, how it works, I'm ready to play. All right, it is super, super simple. So I got the game off of Friends, from the, from the TV show Friends. Okay. So on one episode, Joey is traveling cross country, which I know what how that is, um, and he didn't know whether to go north or south. So Phoebe came up with the game of opposites. So she says two things, and you just got to answer. She, you know, Joey had to answer what entered his head first, and that's all it is. That's all it is. So I'm going to say two things that are opposites of each other. Oh no! Okay. And all you have to do is one of them is going to resonate with you faster. That's all it is. Okay. Okay. So I start off with non food, uh, non wine top opposites, and then we get into wine opposites. I kind of get, you know, got to warm up those muscles before we get okay. going. All, All right. right. I, I think I think I'm ready, but uh, but I'm I have some fear, but I'm ready. All right. All right. Here we go. Super simple. Night or day. Night or day. Yep. So night? which one which one resonates with you more, night or day? Do you like night better or day better? Ah, okay. Um, night. Okay. Sunset or sunrise? Sunrise. Black or white? White. Walk or run? Run. Food or drink? Ah, food. Yeah, that's a tough one for you. <laughs> Old world, new world. Old world. <laughs> Bubbles are still. Bubbles. <laughs> Oak or stainless. Stainless. Drink now or drink later. Drink later. Blend or varietal. Varietal. Vintage or non-vintage. Uh, vintage. Cork or screw cap. 
Depends, but I'm going to go with cork. Napa or Sonoma? Sonoma. Commercial or indigenous? Indigenous. Bordeaux or Rhone? Rhone. Warm climate, cool climate. You already know the answer. Cool climate? <laughs> yeah. That's it, see? Okay, wow, that was easy. Yeah, see, super, super easy. Super, super easy. easy. It's um, just, uh, just, you know, kind of something goofy. Yeah. Well, I, I forgot to mention one other thing. I just wanted to let you know what was going on. Um, you know, you had asked earlier uh, about what I've got coming up. Yes. I've got this really big announcement, you know. Oh, uh, oh is this going to be the first time you announce it? I haven't announced it yet, actually. No, no, I mean, like, will this be the first time yeah, you announce it? This is my anything? first time announcing, right here, on your, <laughs> actually, yeah, huge, okay? Uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of a big deal. Okay. Um, all right, so, on October 15th, I am going to be in Chicago, and I will be uh, having a collaboration with the Michelin Chef, uh, executive chef Sujan Sarkar uh, of Rue, R-O-O-H. Yeah, have you heard of Rue? I have. It's in, it's in New York. It's in Chicago now. They just opened up in Chicago. Um, and I'm going to be doing an exclusive wine dinner with him that night. But I'm going to be doing basically a huge Dolce Vino, my Dolce Vino, at Rue Chicago that night. And then afterwards an amazing wine dinner uh, designed by me and the chef uh, on October 15th. Uh, it's gonna that be is awesome. That is really, awesome. Yeah. How can the people in Chicago or people who want to travel to Chicago, how can they get involved in that? How can they sign up for that? Sure. So I'm going to be releasing it on my site, on my social. So if you follow me on my social, which is Roger, R-O-G-E-R underscore Bissell, B-I-S-S-E-L-L, it will be on Eventbrite. Um, it will also be on Rue's website. Uh, and there's going to be a ton of media, like all, you know, locally Fox, ABC, NBC, all of the media outlets are going to be covering it. Uh, it's, an, it's a great uh, collaboration. But for me, it's going to kind of be a return home. Right. Like 10 years later to Chicago. Uh, and it's going to be an amazing dinner. Uh, they've only been open a couple of months now. Uh, its food is absolutely dynamite, amazing. It's Indian, modern Indian fusion. So for all those people that like uh, Indian food and then perfectly paired with wine, it's going to be a great night. I'm excited about that. So, wow, that yeah. is awesome. Yay. So that's the next kind of big thing. Here first. <laughs> and, and just so you know, I announced it here on your podcast first. Exploring the wine glass gets the first announcement, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, thank you very, very much for joining me. And uh, it was so much fun. And I, I kind of, you know, I miss you. You need to come back to New York. I want, you know, I, I you know. Okay. Deal. I have, I have to honestly say, and I'm, I'm not really trying to put other people down because, you know, I'm not really trying to do that. But sometimes when you go to master classes, the people who present the master class are just like, blah, 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 you know. And, you know, right. information is there, and they know what they're talking about and all of that, but they don't grasp you. They don't, you know, have you on the edge of your seat type, you right. know. You want to learn more. You want to hear what they're saying. And I have to say, yours was – I sat there, I think my jaw might have dropped, you know, like it was so, it, it, like it just was an intriguing, and you brought, you bring the people when you talk to people, when you present, you have the personality, you have the aura around you that brings the people in with you, and the Aww. class was, the class was really interesting, intriguing, and it, it wasn't just, here's wine, drink it, and here's the facts, like you really... Yeah. You know, I loved the class. I really did. And by the way, that that class is um, on the podcast. It, it so people can, people can listen to it, and it is a very highly downloaded 
downloaded episode. So people are enjoying it. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, thank you. You know, I'll have to link that to my website that's going live as well because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on my uh, uh, link on Press Fit Media Releases, whatever, as well. So yeah. I'm going to link to you so, as well. And, but first and foremost, thank you so much because for me, that's why I do what I do. And I, it, it means so much. If I can just engage and touch this one person every single time, that means a lot. And you're absolutely right. You can go to any class along the way uh, in your entire career or your passion. You can go to a class and it's something you can get in a book, right? You can see it in a book. You can read it. You can, you can research it. But if you can make it fun and engaging, then it makes a world of difference because it leaves a lasting, indelible mark on your life and it creates a memory the same way wine creates memory for people. So that means a lot to me. Thank you so much for realizing my passion. and I thank you for yours as well. Thank you so much for having me as a guest on uh, your podcast. Today. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, and, uh, there's going to be a little bit more wine in my glass later, so I hope there's a little bit more in yours later also. <laughs> I've got some dinner plans, a few uh, friends coming over for dinner, so there might be a couple of other different bottles. So there you maybe you can grab drunk. Ah, I would love to see, you know, you got to send me uh, some, of the, some, of your, some of your faves. Uh, we'll see. Okay. And okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share a little bit uh, off, off mic of uh, who, who we've competed against and how we've done. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. I enjoy it. Until next time, and I'll see you in New York sometime soon. Yes. Thank you.